Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com on Roku Dwyer Boxing. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm a big believer that the time to research fighters is before they break out, before they get big. I'm also a really big believer that talent can come from anywhere, right? Longtime subscribers know that I'm stunned, very impressed by the amount of talent coming out of the Ukraine, right? I think per capita, the Ukraine ranks with any other part of the globe, right? I'm also very impressed that certain parts of the world, the UK, for example, with Derek Chisora, Tyson Fury, David Hay, we'll even throw in David Price, are, um, you know, overrepresented in terms of their presence uh, in the heavyweight division. And, of course, there's some cities, notably the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, here in the United States, with fighters like Brian Jennings, Eddie Chambers, Malik Scott. Um, I feel that areas like that are overrepresented and really have great boxers per capita. Well, let's go to Australia here and let's talk about an unbeaten heavyweight who already has a win over James Tony, and who just dismantled Travis Walker in a fight in which he dropped Walker several times. In fact, the way the fight ends is Walker's corner has had enough. Walker has had enough, just decided not to come out for, I believe it was the eighth round, right? His name is Lucas Brown. He's a six foot four inch unbeaten heavyweight with, quite frankly, some of the more impressive tattoos in the division, right? Now, as good as Lucas Brown is, and he is a knockout puncher, right? Go through his history in his last five fights. The only guy to go the distance with him was James Tony, and James Tony, even an older James Tony, is still proficient defensively, right? Very hard to stop James Tony. Everyone else has gotten stopped early. Travis Walker, quite frankly, was lucky to make it to the end of the seventh round, right? As good as Brown is, and Brown is a guy with a very heavy, very lethal left hook, right? If he comes in, excuse me, right hook, if he comes in and hits you with that right hand, you're going to hit the canvas. He has one punch knockout power. I know a lot of people in Australia are excited by him. Here's why I think he loses to Vladimir Klitschko and to David Hay. Right, As good as Lucas Brown's power is and as impressive as his size is, Brown stands upright. Right, He's not slick. He's not bending at the waist. If you time it, you can hit it. His jab is non-existent. We'll call it non-functional. He doesn't jab his way in. He's a guy who's hanging out, just waiting to land that big punch, right? Understand, the way punchers interpret the sport is different than the rest of us, right? The rest of us think in terms of winning points, winning rounds, looking good. If the knockout comes, great. To many punchers, the sport is literally, I show up, I see an opening, I put you down, right? I believe Lucas Brown is from the latter school. Let me point out, too, that Lucas Brown's foot speed is not the best, right? I believe we've looked at some great athletes in the sport. Um, Vladimir Klitschko is a great athlete. He's so coordinated, you forget he's something like 6'6", right? You forget how tall he is because Vladimir Klitschko moves so well, and Vladimir Klitschko post Lehman Brewster, and I'll agree he disintegrated in that fight, but post Lehman Brewster, 
Vladimir Klitschko has excellent stamina, right? So he's coordinated, he's big, he has a big punch, he has excellent stamina, he moves around the ring. Lucas Brown at 6'4", looks like he's 6'4". In other words, he's that guy we used to call big lumbering guy, right? You know, he's big, he's lumbering, he doesn't move that well. Well, my point to you is this. If you don't bend a lot at the waist, if you're not cat quick and can bend at the waist and can duck under punches to get inside like Mike Tyson, and if you can't jab your way in, right, like let's say Larry Holmes, and if you're not that fast afoot, then how are you going to get inside on Vladimir Klitschko? I just don't see it happening, right? Understand Vladimir Klitschko can keep you at the end of a jab for several rounds, right? If you don't have an ability to get inside, if you don't have a way to parry the jab, right? Duck under it, knock it down, get inside, and then make the most of your time inside, you're in for a long night. Not only that, after a few rounds, Vladimir Klitschko is going to start throwing right hands over the jab, right? And so you're going to get one twoed. You're going to get knocked out. Let's talk David Hay. Hay's a different fighter than Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko will jab you up, then put you down, right? David Hay is not even interested in jabbing you. He'll faint you. David Hay has punching power. More importantly, though, David Hay has mobility. In other words, David Hay is not hanging around your neighborhood expecting a shootout. No, he's an ambush fighter, right? So David Hay is outside. And keep in mind, most are going to be hesitant to try to bum rush David Hay because they understand David Hay has guns, right? That's, you know, you don't bum rush a guy with a loaded gun. That's a recipe for disaster. So, of course, a guy like Lucas Brown, in my opinion, would be outside and would be tentative to try to hunt down David Hay. If he did try to hunt down David Hay, David Hay has the foot speed to simply back away and watch him while looking for openings. Now, one of the secrets with David Hay, and I don't believe Lucas Brown has this, is David Hay has mobile power. In other words, David Hay can start throwing an overhand right from halfway across the ring. It can hit you and put you down way outside, right? So Dave, And David Hay's fast with it, right? When you're watching a David Hay fight, the punches are quick. They're like missiles, right? He's not throwing slow motion punches. He's not Big George Foreman. Foreman hit hard, but, you know, the punch looked like it was pre-internet speed. David Hayes at internet speed, right? It's a quick punch. By the time you realize he's throwing a punch, the other guy could well be on the seat of his pants, right? I feel that Lucas Brown is simply too slow for David Hay, right? I think Lucas Brown would have a problem getting inside on Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Obviously, I feel the best heavyweight in the world is Vitaly Klitschko. I think Vitaly Klitschko is just too good defensively and too two-handed and has a very good jab. Look at his fight against Sam Peter, where he jabbed Sam Peter deaf. Right? I believe Vitaly Klitschko would be able to beat Lucas Brown. Right? I made a video a few days ago that seemed to get a lot of responses. It was about a heavyweight named Andy Ruiz, right? The consensus here on YouTube seems to be that Andy Ruiz is too out of shape to be an elite fighter. I disagree strongly. I think Andy Ruiz is an elite fighter right now. I would take Andy Ruiz over Lucas Brown because I think Andy Ruiz, quite frankly, can get inside on anybody and I feel Andy Ruiz is just too fast. I mean, way too fast for Lucas Brown. Understand Andy Ruiz is fast for a heavyweight, right? Don't look at the guy's body. Look at the guy's game, 
right? So my assessment on Lucas Brown right now on July 30th, 2013, is that even though he beat James Tony, right? I don't believe Lucas Brown beats the upper crust of the heavyweight division. Let me talk about Lucas Brown against Tyson Fury. You know, Tyson Fury can fight inside. But Tyson Fury can also fight outside. Look at Tyson Fury against Kevin Johnson. I believe Tyson Fury from the outside operating behind a jab would be able to beat Lucas Brown. Perhaps Lucas Brown will prove us all wrong. I'll concede that Lucas Brown's right hand is so explosive that he'll, he would have a puncher's chance in any fight. Certainly if he hits anyone, he could give them a concussion and knock them out. I just don't think he'll be able to hit guys who can operate behind a jab or who have vastly superior hand speed to him. I think Lucas Bryan moves a little bit too slow for the guys I've just named. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I also think too that hoverers Guys like Kubrat Pulev, who, again, can stay outside and can be effective from outside, who don't have to come inside to actually engage you, would give Lucas Brown all he can handle. Against a slower-footed opponent, right, against a James Tony, who's slower-footed and who wants to actually stand there and trade chess and whose reflexes have dulled a bit because of age, right? Lucas Brown is going to be very effective. But the guys I've named, they can beat you from long range. Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay, Kubrat Pulev, Tyson Fury. And I believe the way to beat Lucas Brown is from the outside in. Let me just say too, Andy Ruiz. I know he doesn't look like Mike Tyson. What I want you to do is look at his recent string of knockouts. I believe that Andy Ruiz is that rear fighter who could probably beat Lucas Brown from the inside out. In other words, Ruiz, like Tyson, if he gets inside, he can throw very quick, very hard combinations. He's shorter than Lucas Brown. He'd be able to get under a lot of what Lucas Brown is doing, just like he did with Joe Hanks right? Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us, gamblersadvisory.com. The heavyweight division has a lot of names from a lot of parts of the world. You need to keep track of what's happening all over. You certainly need to keep track of unbeaten heavyweights beating former heavyweight champs, which is what Lucas Brown did when he beat James Tony in April. He just derailed Travis Walker. It's a fight worth watching. Thanks for stopping by.